Good morning, one and all. We are back. That's right, your garden buddy sitting here in the studio from San Diego, California, broadcasting from the iHeart Media and Entertainment Studios. It is Saturday morning. Brian Maine, right here. John Magnasco, Tiger Palafox. Welcome, one and all. We've got a good show lined up today. I didn't use the word great because we're not sure yet. It might turn into a great show. It's going to be a good show. No <laughs> guest lined up today, which means a lot of show and tell, a lot of your questions, a lot of your comments there, are right there, I should say, on Facebook Live. And, of course, we welcome those on BizTalk Radio tuning in, John, to last week's show. Oh, gee, I just got dizzy from that. <laughs> John, John was taken aback. How do you speak so quickly? I got to get it because we're a little bit late and I got to get going here. I got to yeah. catch us up on time. You know why I, I speak <laughs> more slowly than you do? Is because I usually think of what I'm going to say before I say it. I knew you, he was going to say that. <laughs> That's twice this morning that John and I knew what each other was going to say. You guys. That's something. Separated at birth there. Yeah, to some degree. So we are back. <laughs> it's good to have you. Now, some people may be watching this show after the fact. So it could be on our YouTube channel, it could be on our Facebook page, digital streaming, podcasting. How about that, John? Doesn't you, make any difference. You're blown away. We have aren't a you? good time. You can hear about gardening. You can share your gardening experiences. And that's a nice shot of you. But those that are watching on Facebook, that aerial shot of Tiger and some of the plants we brought in today for show and tell, in lieu of no guest. Yeah, it's always fun to kind of just chat about what's exciting in in our yards, you know, along with other people's yards as well. But it also, hopefully, we can inspire people to look for something new or to um, be intrigued about something that maybe um, has perked our interest. Because, you know, I mean, we're out there, and it's always fun to just kind of be surprised every once in a while by a plant or a product that oh, you didn't even know about. There's always new things happening. Always, right. always. So yeah. we've, I, we have, I guess, unusual plants today, maybe plants you don't see every day or not? Um, Some you see every day. Yeah. Now, the ox tongue that I brought in that I'm going to return to John, you don't see that every day. We can... Show that later on. Yeah. Um, By the way, Carla says that she always enjoys our guests, oh, but yeah? she likes it when it's just the family, too. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, thank we you, enjoy Carla. just having you, Carla, so thank you. We do you. appreciate that. So we're happy to be here. Whatever's on your mind uh, on Facebook, you can chime in anytime, no matter what we're talking about, because we're not restricted with our guest or time in regards to that. So it's kind of wide open, Tiger. Yeah, it's going to be a good show in terms of being able to just kind of dive deep into a things that people want to talk about today since we have more time to be able to spend on a specific subject. But, um, you know, going into this time of year, summertime, it's also hard sometimes to find topics because, I mean, John, we're out there working I mean, in the yard. topics other than water. Water, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, Dude. how often to water, when to water, what to water. Just water nonstop. What? Wake up in the morning, turn on your hose, and turn it off before you go to bed. I planted these um, blue fan flowers, scavola. Oh, yeah. Okay, in my yard, um, just to spruce up an area. And... Um, there's one, and it keeps drying out at 3 o'clock. That's and an it, indicator plant. <laughs> it is. It just sits there and droops. Right. And so then I go, okay, I go by I and I water it. I gave you a plant it. like that a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. That one I have to water like every day. <laughs> yeah. But this scavola just droops. And then the other day I was like, I can't believe this is drooping already. It drooped a little earlier. So I was like, maybe now I'm overwatering it. Nope. I watered it, perked right back up. So I was like, oh, nope, still underwatering it. One day these roots will grow. And yeah, that's we'll not a drought-tolerant plant. Not at all. So, yeah, but, you know, watering this time of year, too, is a challenge because we've also talked about how your native plants or your drought-tolerant plants, you, right. the ones, and if you water them this time of year. They die. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah, right. You, exactly. you think you're trying to help it. Yeah. And for some reason you're like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm going to give you a good a drink of water. And Three days later, yeah. it's dead. Yep. Yeah. It's like if plants could talk and you say, what happened to you? They'd go, my gardener poisoned me, <laughs> gave me water. Exactly. Uh. Exactly. But we talked about this before the show as well. You can spend, you know, 20 minutes to a half hour watering and get up the next day. It looks like you haven't watered at all this yeah. time of year. It's so hot. But, but you know, the thing that's weirding me out right now is we have a high amount of humidity. Did, did you guys see just Vegas again got pretty much flooded uh, yesterday, I think, again? Um, you know, there is a lot of moisture around us and in our air right now. Mm -hmm. But for some, how come the plants don't 
like when when there's heavy moisture in the air, even if it's not raining, they still dry out so quickly with the quickly with the heat. Why doesn't the humidity do more to keep them moist? Yeah, to keep them like why yeah. it the ground is still wet, right? But the plants just aren't absorbing it. I don't get it. But you know that humidity when it's cloudy, it it, it just it's, it's a suffocating heat. Yeah, it's like it's like the heat can't escape, and it gets real. In fact, it rained what Wednesday. I yeah. think it got really think humid, so. and I watched these clouds from the inland area just slowly make their way toward the yeah. coast and then dumped rain. Yeah. When it's hot like it has been this past week, any kind of cloud cover feels good to me. Oh, yeah. Even if it's humid, it just feels so good. Yeah. You can go out there and do some work. But I've had a lot of things I wanted to put in the ground this week, and it's too hot, so it's probably not a good idea anyway. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't have time. It's it, just I oh, turn on the hose and don't stop till. It's time to you know John can attest dinner. to this. We talk about the humidity. Uh-huh. It's nothing compared to back east Michigan. Oh right. I mean this is yeah. nothing. You get out of the shower back there, you're wet. You never dry off. But I was going to ask John because they have been talking about how this is a more humid. You know we haven't gotten more rainfall, but it's more humid than normal. Right. And with you having your selection of roses, some of them are not necessarily wonderful disease tolerant roses. They're very sensitive. Have you seen anything on your plants that been like, oh, wow, yeah, this year I'm seeing more disease? Or not really? No. No? No, and part of it might be where my house is situated. I always have a breeze. So there you go. I don't have um, – I mean, I get mildew in the beginning of the year, but by this time of the year it's gone. Yeah, but this is the time of year when you're going to see the rust and the black spot. The, no, rust the- – you only see in the spring. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was in the more hot time no. of year where, no? no it's got to be, uh, has to be humid, hot oh, and okay. humid, and then it dries up and goes away in the summer. I don't know what's happening to my roses. Then. <laughs> 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 no, I my two roses, Chrysler Imperial, uh, or three, um, Chrysler Imperial, Orange Juice, and Peggy Martin are the only three roses I have. None of them have rust, but mine are not blooming like you said, yours right. were. And John's got blooms on his roses. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever had between. rust on a rose that I can recall. I've been taking budwood from roses and sending it to Wisconsin. I've sent three orders now, probably over 100 varieties uh, for Wisconsin roses is going to bud them up for us for the auction coming up. October 31st or 30th? 30th. 31st is Halloween. I right. knew that well, I there's no way we could have it on Halloween because it's a big like, day for you. Like roses. Yeah. Auction each other off. <laughs> so you're going to be Thank there, you. right? Do you know what? Sunday I, the 30th. I'm not positive, but it looks like there's going to be a reporter from CNN there. Really? Yeah. Why, why is this any different? She's <clears throat> writing an article for their website, I think, about rose preservation. Really? And everything that we're doing to preserve varieties of roses. Hmm. Cool. She's been working on it for like three months. And keeps asking me about people to interview and she's doing a really thorough job and by the time the auction comes around that'll be what five months that you'll would have been working yeah on. she wasn't sure she could get them to use the uh the story but apparently so if she's working on it this long yeah i think there's a lot of interest behind that you know as far as people like roses and people right. like stories behind the plants i mean it's always interesting to it, this week on our Facebook, the uh, story about, well, it was in parentheses, Chinese, what was his name? <laughs> what, what did they Oh, Chinese Wilson. Chinese Wilson. <laughs> Chinese Wilson. Right. Chinese Wilson, you know? Er, yeah, Ernest, uh, Ernest Wilson? Is that his Ernie, name? Or, I think it said Ernie or something on it, yeah. But, um, you know, the, yeah, the story just behind, you know, plant hunting and how they came about and right. in the path that they have gotten here and just he was from the arnold arboretum though which one's that I in boston that oh boston. outside of boston yeah one of the most famous arboretums in the country oh. you know a lot of people like quotes and we just happen to have the quote of the week oh yeah from uh, john i think he's uh on his phone right now looking for I've that got quote. It. No, I've he's, got the quote. he's he's on which amazon right now is ordering, by the so. way on our newsletter every week with a different quote are you ready for it? Oh, we're ready. <laughs> it's from uh, garden writer Hal Borland. We've used quotes from him before. And he said, August, 
It brings katydids, elderberries, blackberry pie, and goldenrod. August is just another 31 days of concentrated summer, but it certainly gets one in condition to appreciate fall when it comes. Good old August. We'll take it, and some of us will like it. <laughs> all I <laughs> so heard was true. Katie did. Katie did. That's all I heard Katie did. I, I noticed that in the newsletter uh, when I read the quote this morning. There's never any Katie Dinnance. No, Katie didn't. Hey, it is break time, though, so we're going to take a quick break here on Facebook Live, a bit longer on BizTalk Radio, so you can listen to our many sponsors who support BizTalk Radio and this show, Garden America. Do stay with us. And again, those on Facebook Live, it is, uh, I was going to see open phones. It's not open phones, but it's open comments on uh, Facebook the entire time since there's no guest today. So questions, comments on Facebook. We're going to take a break for our friends on BizTalk Radio. This is Garden America, Brian Maine, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox. Do stay with us. More Garden America coming up after these messages on BizTalk Radio. All right, we are back from that uh, short break on Facebook Live. A bit longer on BizTalk Radio, so thank you for tuning in this morning. Hope you had a good week, and your weekend is off to a good start. We are broadcasting, as always, from the iHeart Studios here in San Diego, California. Good to have you along. Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco. We brought a lot of different plants in today, as you can see from that one shot of Tiger and those plants. So we got to early business out of the way. What do, you, what do you want to do now, John? Well, we should acknowledge some of our listeners because they're from all parts of the country and the world. Absolutely. So you why know, don't you go ahead and do that got listeners from uh, uh, Pakistan, 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 from uh, Idaho, Arizona. from Arizona, California, uh, d- different parts of California, Redding. So uh, welcome, everybody. We'll try to get to some of your questions now. Uh, first of all, our good buddy Daniel has a question for Tiger. Uh-oh. He says, uh, my dad wanted me to ask how to get rid of wild violet. Wild violet. Yeah. Hmm. Not, the sounds tame, like, not, not the tame violet, but the wild violet. Yeah. Sounds like one of your old girlfriends. Wild violet. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a band. It does, yeah. That's wild a good violet. name for a band. That's good. Yeah. So it's a broadleaf weed. Yeah. Um, it depends where it is, right? If it's, it's in a lawn... That's easy because you can use a broadleaf weed killer. Right. Um, if it's in flower beds, that's going to be more difficult. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, time of year, is you have to be strategic when trying to remove it, too, because I know in lawns, you know, one of the things I was I, I learned about using broadleaf weed killers in lawns is a lot of it has to do with the timing when you apply those. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean time of year? Time. Well, just timing as far as time of year because when the weeds come up, um, when the broadleaf weed killers will be most effective. And if I remember for the wild violet, you, you want to catch that early early on um, when you start to see it emerge from the... Uh, in the spring. In the spring from in the grass. Now, but for planter beds... You can't use pre-emergence real well on those, so you can spot treat with Roundup. Yeah, I was gonna say that's kind of, but it, but Roundup it, will kill anything you spray say, it on. Yeah. So you got to be careful. And they do have a few other herbicides out there that are effective in beds, but I'm trying to think of wild violets listed on some of those products because we've been having trouble from our landscape company end with controlling in beds of different grasses and weeds. And there's been a product that we've been using called um, Burnout, which is kind of like a safe uh, organic herbicide from um, bone. That's a vinegar base, isn't it? I think it's clove, clove oil and thyme oil. I remember that one, which was nice. I like those products because if they don't work, they still smell good. It smells like a salad. Yeah. (laughs) But the nice thing about it is that it burns wild violet in a lot of the leaves real easily, but it doesn't kill the roots. It doesn't kill them. Right. So working in beds where you have hardy plants, you might burn a few leaves or so in your garden, but you don't kill your plants, like right. using the glyphosate. So it allows you to control it and then get in there and pick and pull much easier. Yeah. So 
if it's in beds, I would use like an organic one like Burnout or, um, yeah, Burnout or there's another one. I can't remember. Um, Natural Guard had one that was also vinegar based, but Burnout, I think, was clove oil and thyme oil. So try that in the beds. And then on the lawn one, you might be a little bit too late. And do not use the weed and feed products in lawns for it. For? For the violet, if you have it in your grass. Okay. This time of year. Because, oh, this time of year. Because yeah. we were talking about it, it needs right. to be early. In the spring. Yeah, don't don't use the weed and feed products. This time of year, you're just going to end up spreading the problem. The other thing to remember on weed and feed products or spraying broadleaf weeds in your lawn is that you want to water your lawn really good first and then no rain or no water or when rain is expected for two days yeah. because it can wash off the weed killer and it's not as effective. Yeah, you get a bunch of half-grown yellow weeds, not right. dead ones. <laughs> now, we should mention, since this show is worldwide, that in the Southern Hemisphere, South Africa, all those places, they will be getting into their springtime before too long. Yeah. So if you're listening to this show in the Southern Hemisphere, that time of the year is coming up before you know it. <laughs> That's true. Hey, uh, one of our uh, listeners uh, in Pakistan wants us to comment a little bit about pecans. Ooh. One of one of uh, John's favorite trees, right? You know, I really like pecans. Yeah. Uh, some pecans, I would say probably most pecans, are not self-fertile. So you have to have two varieties to pollinate each other. Mm -hmm. um, there is a there is a self-fertile variety though, and you'd have to look that up. I can't think of it right now. Might be Western Schley, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, that name is sitting in the back of my mind. Western Schley. Yeah. S C H L E Y. One thing I remember about pecans too is the young pecan trees, um, like figs, are very sensitive to watering and fertilizing. So I know that you know the growers have said just kind of, just kind of um, don't invest a lot in the young pecan tree. Meaning, plant it. Don't need to amend the soils real heavy. You don't need to fertilize anything like that. Give them a watering. And then kind of let them dry out between because, the you know, unlike the apple and the plum, and the nectarine that can tolerate more water, more fertilizer, more compost, the fig and the pecan, they like to be, they thrive a little bit more on neglect is what I remember. As well, well, pecans and walnuts both have tap roots. So rather than a fibrous root system uh, that needs, like an avocado that needs to be watered frequently, they have a tap root that'll go down like six to ten feet and it brings water up uh, subsurface water up so um, they are drought tolerant once yeah. they're established and pecans love the heat you know yeah. in, in the u.s uh like texas is a big pecan yeah. area they grow lots of them over you there must love the humidity as well uh, they don't mind the humidity but they will also grow where it's dry okay they don't need the humidity and they're huge trees Big shade trees. Yeah, 40 yeah. feet, you know, 50 feet. Yeah, they can get rather large. When we went now, up to Chico years ago and we stayed in that bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. wasn't there a huge pecan, a um, bunch of pecan trees behind the house? And, and I think that they, they collected them and they actually sold them. Does that ring a bell with you? It does now that you're bringing it up. But I don't know if I'm inventing that in my mind, <laughs> no. pretending I remember. Oh, yeah. I, it was yeah, behind. It, it was huge, acres yes. and acres, really? and we commented on it. But I, I don't know if it. I guess it they were be. pecans. I think so. Because it gets something hot Bruce would have commented on. Did What's you that? talk to Bruce about that? Um, it I, seems like something he would have brought up. He probably brought it up, but then it piqued my interest. Yeah, I don't remember, but. It's an area up there where they grow pecans. Right, because so. you were talking about the heat, and it does get very hot up there. Boy, talk, have you tried to buy pecans lately? $10 for Oh, my gosh. Like They're so cup. expensive. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. $10 if you go to Costco. Costco, Costco right. exactly. All those, all those nuts are expensive. The almonds, pecans, walnuts. So yeah, expensive. pecans are, for some reason, the most expensive, though. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're going to duck out just a little bit early. 
Again, uh, no guests today, so it's all you with your questions, your comments. We've got some more show and tell with the various plants that we brought in this morning to the studio. So do stay with us. Those on BizTalk Radio are going to take a break. Those on Facebook Live, same thing, but on Facebook Live, back a little bit sooner. Questions, comments, those on Facebook, go right ahead. I'm Brian Main, Tiger Palafox, John Begnesco. Once again, want to thank you for tuning in to Garden America. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. We are back. Welcome. Thank you for being part of uh, our weekend, part of your weekend as well. Good to get together every Saturday here. We kick things off at 8 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast, 11 o'clock Eastern time zone, and uh, various time zones in between, that of course being Mountain, Central Time, so on and so forth. And of course, broadcasting via digital streaming around the world here on Garden America. I, I'm reading an interesting comment from Linda. It says, I grew a, hu- a large, healthy tomatillo only to realize... Just recently, they do they don't self pollinate next year. Um, don't self pollinate tomatillo. What? You can't have one tomatillo plant. You have to have two, Is that right? To get fruit. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. Kind of. Have like you that. grown tomatillos? Yeah, I feel like I have. Really? But. Maybe I haven't. Do you feel like you have the same way that I feel like I remember <laughs> the, the pecan, the pecan, pecan story? <laughs> the pecan orchard? Uh, yeah. But um, so you have to have two tomatillo plants. It's kind of and, that birds and bees thing there, Tiger. Right. But um, it's, yeah, okay. I, I didn't know. Hey, Jose says that... Uh, Pecan trees do really well here with uh, neglect in San Diego yeah. County. Really, let them go, huh? Yeah, but this is a fun fact. He says when they start to go dormant, the leaves turn yellow, and that signals to the parents that the pecans are ripe and ready to eat. Oh. How about that? Really? That is a fun fact. Yeah. yeah. It's usually yeah, that's around always, November, December. That's always some ready. of the hard thing. I mean, you know, talking with Lance Walheim and – um ed libo when it comes to fruit and nut trees bushes when to pick when is the time to pick when is the time to harvest you know that's because yeah you know as um lance has told us the color of the fruit can mean nothing about whether it's ripe or not you know you can have a beautifully orange orange on a tree but it could not be ripe yet it could be weeks away from being ripe. And, you know, I it's you it's tough. It. It's tough to, you know, yeah, you got to squeeze it. You got to yeah. you got to pick a few and try them, you know, like avocados. You got to pick a few and then let them ripen. And then then you can start to pick them when you start to see that, OK, these ones do ripen up. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, the, the oil content in avocados has to be to a certain percentage. And the way you tell is you pick one. <laughs> <laughs> and if it shrivels, it wasn't ready. Yeah. So you got to wait a few more weeks. But yeah. if it ripens, then you know the others are okay to are pick okay whenever to you pick. want them. Yeah. And the nice thing about avocados is they don't ripen on the tree, so yeah. they'll last a long time. Put them time. in a bag with an apple, John. Is that what you do? No, I don't. <laughs> Ethylene gas, that whole gas story you talked that, about years ago. Yeah, that it'll ripen them right away. But I just don't do it because I there's, don't. There's no. I mean, I don't do want them to ripen right away. Right. Um. Our friend in Pakistan wanted to uh, know about the temperatures there for pecans. And oh, from what yeah. he's telling us, it sounds like it's perfect. Yeah. That they should do really well mm-hmm. there. Yeah. They, I mean, they can tolerate a lot of heat, like you're saying. And, yeah. and as John mentioned, too, they're actually great shade trees. Oh, yeah. Awesome. You know, I mean. Huge. You know, the rep we had for um, UPS uh, when I was, when we were shipping plants. uh uh-huh. uh tomatoes and things for Garden America, um, actually fell out of a pecan tree oh and was in the hospital for three months. <laughs> Random <laughs> fact there. So yeah. so I guess the point would be be careful if you're up in a pecan tree yeah. because they're huge trees. I think he fell like 20 feet. Yeah, Gosh. they are. They're, they're, wow. And they're really good shade trees. So, you know, they're good to prune and lace and yeah. they, they, they make a nice tree. 
I would think they're probably not good for a lawn area, again, because of the, the way we those. were talking yeah. about the water. Yeah. Right. They, they would like to be in an area that's going to get in frequent watering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back of the property, kind of alone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so since we're talking about pecan and fruit trees, can I bring up one of my show and tell items? Or do we have some more questions to answer are we, right how now? How many in the questions? Are we pretty good well, on the questions? We've got a, quite a few comments and questions. Ron says that he's got a friend uh, that has a wild pecan orchard in Texas. Oh. And he says they're better than the hybrid pecan trees. Nice. So you just, you never know, right? Yeah. When things come up uh, from seed. Yeah. Facebook is active, John, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Jose made a comment here, too. He said they're also really fast growing. Oh, yeah? And he They said start they, from seeds pretty easy. They start from seeds easily, which is why Ron's friend in Texas has some that wild Wild ones. orchard of it. Right. Yeah. But, again, if you do start it from a seed... You're, the fruit is going to be variable, so you're not sure what kind of nuts you're going to get. Did you, I'm sorry, I might have missed it. Did you answer Ron's question about the pecans needing chill, chill hours in the winter like almonds? Oh. I don't think they do. They're, they're low, Yeah, if anything. I mean, Yeah, there are some high chill varieties, but if you go to the uh, Dave Wilson website, yeah, I think, they have a and, whole list and you look under nuts, it'll tell you the chill hours for pecans. There's definitely low chill pecans. Yeah. Tiger, you want to show something? We've got this is one of our yeah. longer segments. So, you know, we're talking about pecans right now, and I brought in a tree because there's this fad happening right now. I'm going to move I one love of that. these plants out of the way. This is uh, this I love. We'll talk about this. Yeah, later. I that's one of my favorites. But this is a fig. Yes, it is. You can tell by the leaves. Okay. And it's a little bush kind of fig. Fignom, fig, fig, fignom, fignominal. 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 Yes. All right. So this is a fig called fignominal. And there's this whole trend of dwarf compact figs, which... Figs were always dwarf and compact. What? Yeah, like they don't get to be big trees. Figs? Have you ever seen a mission fig? Like Maybe. 30 feet well, tall? No, no, no. What, okay, I was going to okay. say, what is, your, what is your idea of, of, of how tall? Uh, there, are, only... there are some, as a matter of fact, blackjack fig, yeah? which is a dwarf fig. Yeah? It's 20 feet tall. Okay, well, we're talking more dwarf, maybe like six, eight feet tall. We're talking about phignominus, right? Yeah, yeah. No, phignominal. This is phignominal. <laughs> yeah. But um, but I didn't I didn't realize this. You are teaching me something new today. That there's a whole new series of dwarf figs, right? Yeah, and you know, for those of you that know figs, also know that they fruit like crazy. Yeah, and I so can see right now little little. You fig can fruits. see the little ones on there, yeah, right? Sure. And um, so they fruit like crazy. So you really don't need a thirty foot tall fig. That would be right. Just excessive. Right. Um, and also you know the flavors on them are on point with all the other figs um they can be grown in pots so if you have something like a half sure. a whiskey barrel yeah. a good sized pot they can grow in that um and you know they the i had and i don't know if i mentioned this in the show the other day i went to a fundraiser a few uh months back and they had a fig leaf with a like a tempura batter on it and they fried it with just a little bit of salt and the pepper. The leaf? The leaf? The leaf. Really? With just a little bit of wow. salt and pepper, a little light batter on it, fried it. It was spectacular. Really? Spectacular. So. Anybody he, else on Facebook heard of that before? Yeah. It was wow. just so shocking and so tasty. Um, so, I mean, figs are great. Now, I'm not a big fig eater. Fig eater. I love fig newtons. I love fig. I love fresh figs. I love fig bars, yeah. but do you fig. just pick the fruit right off of the tree and you love it's fresh? It's got to be soft. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Right. Uh, and I think they taste better if you refrigerate them a little. Oh, yeah? And you get a cooler taste. But they're they're usually sweet, juicy, um, picked right off the tree. Yeah. So, I mean. But you, you know why? I think I might try this dwarf fig uh, yeah. phenomenon. Phenomenon. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. <laughs> Phenomenal. Phenomenal is easy to say. Yeah. You know, I think a, a lot of people don't 
aren't familiar with fig figs as a fruit yeah. because they don't ship well. Yeah. So you don't see them in the grocery stores the way you would see apples year round right. or or things like that. Yeah, like so you if you put want, them in a box and they right. just turn into a mushy pile. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So if you want good figs, you pretty much have to grow your own. But they're like you said, they're easy to grow. They're drought tolerant once they're established, yeah. and uh, some of them have a couple crops a year. My favorite, or I I have a fig at my house now that is called. Um, the tiger fig, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's striped. Yeah, they have some cool striped figs. And uh, I put, I picked one the other day and put it in the refrigerator, and then because my wife's taste is better than mine, asked her to taste it. She said it was really good, and then I tasted I ate the rest of it, and it was really good to me. Hey, we're going to take a break, and I noticed, John, we have more questions we have to catch up with on uh, Facebook Live. So keep them coming. We will, we will get to your questions. Right now it is break time to stay on track with our friends on BizTalk Radio. Do stay with us. Again, BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live, every Saturday we do it here in studio. So again, uh, coming back with your questions, your comments on Facebook Live after these messages from our good friends on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. All righty, we are back, and if you are tuned in to uh, BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of hour number one. Top of the hour news, I do believe, still coming your way. We are back at six minutes after. Hopefully you carry uh, both hours. If not, we appreciate you tuning in to at least one or two, both hours on BizTalk Radio. Back on Facebook Live, a lot of questions, a lot of comments to get caught up on. John, what's our first one? Well, staying on the topic of nuts, uh, Lenore <laughs> wanted to know, uh, <laughs> what, a the lot picture, of things picture, just went through my mind that I've got to filter out us. now. Yeah. But she wanted to uh, know when walnuts ripen. Uh, I guess maybe for picking, but the good thing, Lenore, is you don't have to wonder when they ripe, ripen because they just fall off the tree. <laughs> so it's usually around uh, the end of September into October, and uh, and they'll fall to the ground when they're ready. Yeah. And then uh, Hastam in Pakistan wanted to know the difference between grafted pecans and the seedling pecans oh. we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. And as with any fruit, if you grow it from a seed, you're not sure what you're going to get. Right. Yeah. But if you put in a grafted one, you're using budwood from a known variety, and they'll, all those trees will be identical. So you could get large fruit from a seed. You could get small fruit from a seed. You yeah. could get no fruit from a seed. Yeah. You, uh, you, you just could get the know. most amazing fruit or you nut you ever created, yeah, right. or you can get nothing. Right. <laughs> yeah. All the Almost every fruit tree that was out there came from a seed originally right. before it was propagated. I'm not sure what Marguerite was saying here, but... She, she said, uh, drunk in fig jam. Drink? Drink fig? There's I don't fig, know. Fig I'm not sure make a the... good jam, though. Yeah, they do. Do make, they? Yeah. I like fig, fig jam. Uh, Lenore says her plumerias are, aren't flowering. Oh, bummer. And a couple are hardly leafing out. Really? Yeah. Did Lenore in Tucson? Uh, and Lenore's in Canyon, Canyon Country. Country. Canyon Country. Right. Oh, okay. You're thinking of Kim in Tucson. Yeah. And Carol um, in Tucson. Yeah, exactly. So A lot of people in Tucson Garden just, Club listening. Maybe maybe well, she's not watering enough. Canyon Country is real hot, you say, Really right? hot. Yeah, really hot. Yeah. Also if, fertilizer, too, because yeah. you taught me that a couple of years ago, that you need to fertilize them heavily during the summer. Right or when they're when they're leafing out, so they should be leafing out. Give them yeah. give them some water. Cindy wants to know if she can transplant fig trees, and you can, but you have to do it when they're dormant. Yeah, you don't have to. It's, it's the just best. if you want it to live. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you should do it. Do it when it's dormant, so when the leaves fall out uh, in the winter, 
Here in California, I would guess maybe like December would be a good time. Yeah. Yeah, when you know the rains are going to be coming and stuff like yeah. that. January. You got Connie's question as well. I just want to make sure, John, we're good. Plumeria that she rescued from my non gardening brothers has leafed out this year, but no flowers. Too late to bloom this season. You know, sometimes I don't get any blooms on my plumeria, other times I do. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think it has to do with sun or direct sun or little sun. Um, because I know in my patio it only gets a certain amount of sun, so I get flowers, but not a lot. But the one but, outside, yeah, I mean that sun helps a lot with the plumeria blooms, but a lot of it does have to do with fertilization too. Sure, um, especially if you're going for a series of years where you're not getting blooms, because um, you need to feed it. And then there's also early blooming varieties and late blooming varieties. And for some people, the late blooming varieties don't bloom. Because by the time they would be blooming, it gets cold. Right. And now you've lost that chance. Yeah. It's kind of like tomatoes, you know, like late season, early season. If you plant them at the wrong time, the plant will grow. That's fine. But you won't get any fruit on it. Um, and so those, like, for instance, the the large one that I have, King Lord, Lord Byron, that's a very late blooming flower. Mm -hmm. And if I lived in an area that got cold in October... I probably wouldn't see the blooms because it that's the time when it's probably in its full bloom. Yeah, mine hasn't mine might be too small, but I haven't gotten a bloom on yet, and that's one of my favorite. Yeah. I, I bought it just because you had one <laughs> brought in late. Hey yeah. Marguerite explained what she was talking about. It's called drunken fig jam. Ooh. Oh, and, okay. And it has uh whiskey in it. Yeah. How about that? Drunken fig jam. Sounds I, good. Yeah. And, you know, figs also, not the fruiting figs as much, but a lot of ficus trees. And I think I've talked about this before because there's a lot of ficus trees in San Diego. You know, Morton Bay fig. You right. know, There's a lot of ficus trees all around I just San planted Diego. a banyan. <laughs> there you go. Yes. See? Um, and um, they, they produce figs, ficus, fig, um, but... They fall to the ground, and then they you, you when you draw when you walk by these large trees with all the fruit that's falling, you can actually smell the alcohol in coming the out air of it from the fermenting fruit. And if you look at the critters around the squirrels, the birds, and all of that, right. they truly are getting drunk off of eating these fermented fruit. Yeah, and it's kind of funny. So I don't I don't even know sometimes if you need the whiskey, you could just. Have a few old figs and throw it into your jam, and it'd probably be enough. <laughs> I remember Bruce and Sharon used to tell us about uh, the birds getting drunk on their mulberries. Oh, yeah. And crashing into things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, here's a tip for you, Tiger, from Connie uh, All right. on what to do with your figs. Okay. She said, uh, put them on the barbecue and quick char, drizzle them with balsamic reduction, Ooh. and maybe some crumbled feta. Wow. Gosh. See? That sounds amazing. You might want to plant two fig trees. Yeah. Jeez. That sounds delicious. You want shade, put in the Mission Bay fig. Or the Mission <laughs> fig. Yeah. Get a 30-foot tree. I, I don't think I need a 30-foot fig tree. No. Yeah, that's a little much. I'm still I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to plant that tree that you gave me a while back. The, the thistle? Thorn? What's the one you gave me? It has thorns on it. Oh, the acacia? Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going to put that acacia in Acacia Karoo. Yeah. It's one of the African acacias, and I think they, we decided they changed the, the uh, genus of the thorn trees. Yeah. So they're not acacias anymore. They're, they're something that begins with a T. I you can't know what? Think if I was an right actor, now. male or female, I would it's take not some a, of these They're names. not huge trees. No, but I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put it. So. Hmm. Doesn't she sound idea. like a beautiful woman? Who? Oh. Acacia Carew. <laughs> you know, it's like I was saying, if I was an actor, I, w I would borrow some of these names, and that that's my stage name. Yes. <laughs> that know? does sound like Acacia a stage Carew. name. Acacia <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we uh, caught up. I think we've well, gone the nice back and forth here, Well, the nice thing about that Acacia Carew is it's a, a small to medium-sized tree and summer flowering with yellow flowers. Yeah. So. we got to take a break. We're going into news time on BizTalk Radio. It will be a much shorter break here on Facebook Live. Do stay with us. Those on BizTalk Radio, we are back after news, top of the hour, six minutes after. Those on Facebook Live coming back much quicker. Do stay with us. Happy weekend from your garden buddies, Brian Maine, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox here on the Garden America Radio and Entertainment Network.
Welcome back to the show. Those on Biz Talk Radio, Hour 2. Those on Facebook Live, we keep on rolling right along. Thank you for joining us. Whether you tune in for just a very few minutes or the entire show, we do appreciate that. Back with uh, Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, I'm Brian Main. Happy Saturday, happy weekend. It is open phones, as we say, not really no phones, but open Facebook. Used to be open phones back in the day when we took phone calls, but nowadays it's right there on Facebook Live, your questions and your comments. John, what about those questions and comments? Where do we stand? Well, I thought we'd ask Tiger to tell us a little bit about Kiki's. <laughs> about Kiki's? <laughs> little little kids? Yeah. Yeah? That's the... Um, Hawaiian. The Hawaiian word for children, children. right? Children, yep. And orchid growers use it to uh, apply frequently to offsets of orchid plants because you can have the main plant and then you get this little offset that you can start a new plant from. So I brought it. Actually, I was a little disappointed, Brian, because I thought you would be all over this. I brought in some that I thought you could take home and, and transplant, and they were epidendrons, which are really easy orchids to grow. And mine are out in full sun. Full sun, you leave them outdoors all year round. You don't have to bring really? them in the house. Low maintenance. And... And I would say that mine probably bloom, have been blooming for the last 11 months. Never stopped. Consistent blooms. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if, uh, I'm not sure where Tiger is right now, if he can get a picture of one of those. I am but focused the, on it as you're speaking. Okay. Right I've, there. I've got the, um, the little vase is the flower of the epidendron. Kind of a hot pink. Maybe, no, a little more darker. More lavender, right? Yeah, yeah. And But the, those came off the main plant, and the main plant is probably about three feet tall and has leaves. And then they at the ends of the branches that have flowered, uh, you get these little plants coming out. Now, if you took those home, you need to put them in orchid mix. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can stop at I Home Depot and get them. They'll be fine like that as long as you sprinkle them with a little water. They'll stay like that for two or three weeks till you get around to planting them. So they I was all gonna... go into one pot? They all can. Then they should. <laughs> there you go. I was going to say, I think Brian's biggest battle that he'll have with those is the overwatering. You know, the, meaning, yeah, meaning that's why they, I said they to really, get some orchid mix. Yeah, they yeah. really like well-draining, just heavy, humid area. Um, and... And throw some orchid mix in there. And you recommend the orchid mix over just a bark? Yeah, I would use the Catalea orchid mix, which uh -huh. is bark mixed with perlite. Yeah. And... I don't have any soil. I just used the last of my soil this week, too, as well, filling up some pots. Yeah. And then on yours, John, do you – where do you have them? I Mine's in a pot but it... out in full sun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and it doesn't get any sunburn on the leaves? Not at all. Oh, wow. Not at all. Okay. And there's probably, uh, you know, I cut uh, those two flower spikes to uh, to bring in, but I would say there's probably probably 15 flower spikes on the plant. And the plants that I have came from those, those little uh, offsets that I brought in today. Yeah. Someone gave them to me. I just stuck them in a container. And some uh, orchid mix. and awesome. You said how, how long can these roots get, you were telling me, before the show? How long? Yeah, the roots. How, how long, do, how deep will they grow? How deep will they go into the soil? Are they, uh, I don't remember saying anything like that, yeah. but they do. I, I have a tall pot. The, the pot that I have them in might be a, a, as high as two feet. Yeah. Just because I have, it's a, one of those tree pots. Uh-huh. Because they don't need... Uh, they really don't need the soil. They're like a lot of orchids. They yeah. just want pots as a reference point. <laughs> right. Because, yeah. you know, they grow in trees. Wouldn't and that be an epiphyte? Like that. It, they are. I would say that the epidendrons are maybe a cross between epiphytes and terrestrials. They'll take a little bit more soil than some epiphytes. Okay. Because some of the epiphytic orchids, if they get any soil, they just rot immediately. Mm -hmm. But these are fine. You treat them like a They're plant. so easy to grow. And if you plant those now, the next year at this time, you'll have blooms everywhere. But but basically, put some uh, get some orchid mix yeah. as well. And and they're Good actually soil. very 
cold hardy as well. I mean, when we they talk are. about yeah. when we talk about orchids, a lot of people think like instantly hot, humid environments, and and that is true. But orchids can tolerate a lot of heat and humidity. It's where they get into trouble is the cold, um, where that's why they kind of need that more like tropical, more mild temperatures. But this variety here can probably, I mean. I don't think they would survive in Alpine here in um, uh, San Diego County, maybe under some protection, but yeah, under they, a tree they might. But you know they can definitely tolerate a lot of cold weather compared to some of the other orchids, which is nice. So if you live in an area that gets freezing but not regular free frost, they would actually do okay with a little protection. Yeah, I think. We're caught up. I'm seeing a lot of people going back and forth on Facebook. I saw Facebook. a few questions. Yeah. Let me see. Carla's Bible collection, Bible plant collection. Yeah. You know, I have a book called Plants of the Bible. And I, I would imagine figs got to be right up there. Figs are in there. Absolutely. Um, I really like trying as, to as think what, of the author of the book. Clothing accoutrement? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, yeah, they're right in there in Genesis, aren't they? Um what I like about the book Plants of the Bible is that it tells you all about those particular plants and how they grow, but it puts the scripture that they're uh, oh. where they've been referred to. So, um, there's a question though from Connie, and I don't think we answered this one yet. When leaves fall off potted plumeria in winter, should it be moved out of the sun? Someone told me should keep in dark in winter. Hmm. Poinsettias. I don't think you have to move poinsettias it. Or yeah, she's, I think she's just referring to how like poinsettias are, poinsettia. are oh. light sensitive, and you, that's you the way you get them. You treat them the same as a poinsettia. But I... Depends where you are. If you're in a cold climate, like uh, our listeners that are in areas where it freezes during the winter, the poinsettias will go dormant uh, the same way they will here in California, and all the leaves will fall off, and then you have to bring those indoors before they freeze. And you just let them basically sit there. You don't water, you don't fertilize, you don't do anything. In California, when they lose their leaves, if they're in the ground, the, you're not going to move them. Uh, they're just right, going to because they're in the ground. They're just going to sit there, right. right? And you don't need, you definitely don't need to move them in the dark. The one thing you might do if they're, uh, and I may maybe this is what people are telling her, is that if you have them in a pot. And we're having a wet winter. They're dormant, so you don't want a lot of water on them. So you don't need to move them to the dark. But if you do move them to an overhang area so they're not going to be watered, that would help. And I – sorry, I was doing something else. Are you referring to poinsettias or plumerias? Plumerias. 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 Okay. Plumerias. That's why I was going to make right. sure, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I agree because I think a lot of times in the wintertime they can get overwatered. And since they are dormant – and if people aren't careful, they will rot out in that pot. But I don't think that they need to be out of the sun um, so much as just preventing them from getting overwatered right. in the wintertime. Right. It's fine. Um, yeah, if we have failed to answer your question, go ahead and post it again. I think Lila had a question there that uh, I was – here it is. She's just transplanted um, some Crashula multicava. Now in full sun, do you think they'd last? You know what? Uh, Lila's in Poway, and it's it's been really hot there, too. And what I would do, there's nothing wrong with transplanting those this time of year. Um, you should make sure that the ends ca uh, callus over a little bit before you plant them, though. So let them sit for a day or two. And then I would just put some shade cloth over them. Hmm. Just lay it over the top, put a couple rocks on each end so the wind doesn't blow it away, and and I think they'll be fine. That's uh, That crashula uh, makes a good ground cover, so that should be a nice one. Okay, you know, we're getting close to uh, break time here, so we'll take this opportunity to uh, take a break for our friends on uh, BizTalk Radio. Do stay with us. We're going to come back with more of your questions, your comments. We have more show and tell here. In the studio, good to have you along again with uh, Brian Maine. I'm Brian Maine, I should say. He's Tiger Pella Fox. John Bignasco. We're all we're all here. I get confused sometimes. I don't know who I am. I could be Tiger. could be John. Anyway, it is break time here on Facebook Live and BizTalk Radio. Do stay with us. As I said, 
and mentioned. More comments, more questions, more plans coming your way here on Garden America. All righty, we have returned, and I say returned because we turned the mics on. We've got hot mics. We are back. We are with you here on Garden America. Happy weekend. Tiger Palafox, John Bagnasco, I'm Brian Maine. I said that a lot better, Tiger, this time around, <laughs> as uh, opposed to going into the break. But we are back with questions, comments, plants, show and tell. Where are we, John, with the questions? I was wondering if you were still working on the hot mic show where I we like record that. everything off air and then... One day we don't come in, we just play it. I just yeah. think that title's The Hot Mic Show. The Hot Mic Show. That's brilliant. I would, like, save it for our last show we ever The did. Hot <laughs> Mic Show. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't care if we get kicked off. Yeah. Well, it will, would definitely be our last show. Yeah. And then a lot of times during the break when the mics are off, John says, be careful because we have lip readers who watch That's us on Facebook. Exactly. Hey, um, our good buddy John Clements, Tiger, says that the it was Vakelia that we were trying to That's think right. of. So thank you, John, for that. So all the acacias that uh, used to be called thorn acacias are now in the genus Vakelia. Genus right. Vakelia. <laughs> it's another name. It's another for, name. Yeah. <laughs> genus Vakelia. Are we caught up on the questions? Do we want to hit? Well, another? Carla wants to go back to roses. Oh yeah, yeah. She That's says fine. that. Um, the thing that she's saddest about is the demise of her alfalfa rose. Well, I have one in the auction, or can I buy one somewhere? <laughs> alfalfa is one of my roses. The, when you created? Uh, when I created a polyantha rose. And, um, you know, I'll have to check. I On Polyantha Hill, which is doing really well right <laughs> now, um, I'm planting all these polyantha roses, and I just planted Spanky. And I think alfalfa may be there. I'll have to check, but I'll see if I can start one. But I don't know of anybody that carries that rose anymore. Um, who was it? Euro-American used, was to, doing it. used to do them, but, you know, now they're out of yeah. business. Yeah. So, but Carla was also saying that she had rust and mildew and black spot. So, yeah. I don't know if you want to. Yeah, I don't want to subject rust no, alfalfa poor, to li that. poor little alfalfa, poor little alfalfa. <laughs> to those conditions. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll see. I'll try to keep that in the back of my mind. Okay. Do you have another plant to show us, Tiger? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. move on. Okay. Oh, Carla also wanted to know if you can zoom in on the flower on the orchid when you get a chance. Okay. This guy here. Yeah. Will you? Hold that up to that camera. Or you can hold it up to your camera. Hold on one second. Um, boom. All right. And w this was which orchid again? That's an epidendron. An epidendron. Right. And so there's the flower. Don't shake it, Brian. Hold I'm it steady. Hold it steady right there. Why is your hand shaking so much, Brian? He's got tremors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect shot. Good job. Um, so I think I'm going to hit my one of my favorite plants. Uh, as a whole, I'm going to move this out of the way here and put this into the shot. Okay, so zoom in on one of my favorite plants. Now, I don't know why I have this as one of my favorite plants in general, but it's a hibiscus. Um, when it was not first introduced because it's been around for a while, but the first common one was maple sugar. Do you mm -hmm. remember that name Yeah. For for this hibiscus? It's a red leafed hibiscus but it's not it's not it's not a tropical hibiscus so it's not rosa sinensis right so it's very um i find the re i, I find like i find them to be a little bit short-lived <laughs> um and also uh not woody like the other hibiscus because like you said it's not the tropical hibiscus it 
it's got this burgundy colored foliage with the maple leaf hibiscus yeah. uh, leaf on it. And they do get flowers on them. They do get a red flower. It usually matches more or less the actual foliage. They're not really known for their flowering, though. Um, I haven't seen one that's been a big prolific flowerer. But um, I, I just like the look of the bush itself. Whether and, it bloomed or not, it's a nice looking plant. Yeah. And, yeah. and so this is one of my favorite plants. So Now, is that um, one that you need to keep pruned in order to get it to be bushy if you want it bushy? Because it looks like it would be leggy. The, I do prune it every year uh-huh. in, because it does get very leggy and doesn't look good. Right. And also, I've killed a number of them. And I don't know why. Well, that's like why I said, they're short lived. Yeah. Well, that's, the <laughs> they're short lived for me. Right. Um, you know, but I just really like the whole look of the plant and the color of the leaves. Um, it's a I great would backdrop. Never know that's a hibiscus. It's a great backdrop for other plants as well. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it's just one of my favorite yeah. plants to keep in my yard. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Um, it's the color. You don't see. Color like that, right? Yeah, I mean, there's in the plant. There's world. sambucus, you know, which you see sometimes with this kind of look. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some other bushes that kind of have that burgundy. The elderberries are hardy or hardier too. They can take yeah. cold temperatures. So but not this one. But yeah, so that's I don't know. It's just one of my favorite mm-hmm. plants. So, if uh, any of the listeners or viewers are wondering what is something that I like, that is one plant that I do enjoy. Well, as soon as you brought it in this morning, uh, Brian co- commented how much right, he liked it. Right away, it. my eyes went right to that because yeah. yeah. it's different. Yeah. Just it's the opposite different. reaction that I got for the orchids I brought in. <laughs> well, no, I like these. Now, you said th- these can, if we didn't plant them for a couple of days, they're okay. As long as you shoot, it? it's like a succulent thing. shoot some water on them, that yeah, okay. you can keep them a few weeks. Beautiful. Yeah. I need to get some potting soil, and I need to get not uh, potting soil, orchid mix, orchid mix, well, orchid no, still, bark mix, orchid mix. So it's so not not even potting soil, just orchid mix, right? Yeah, perfect. Just straight. I I brought in a couple plants that I got from Annie's Annuals. Um, one was because I gave Tiger a plant for Christmas about three or four years ago, and and I killed mine. <laughs> that you did. I kept. <laughs> So I had to get another one, and I was going to ask you how yours was doing. That it, that's uh, what's it called? Uh, sword spear lily. Yeah, some, I thought it was a sword or something. No spear could be a sword. Spear. Tiger, are you it's, like me? If I just don't talk about it, that means that bad things happen to the plant. Yeah, um, just don't bring it up. It is six and a half feet tall now. What? Yes. Oh my god! It's in the ground. Then it's right? in the ground. Yeah. Has it's it like, bloomed? Not yet. Uh, no. Probably next year, huh? I I don't know. I don't know. We'll see, huh? Because should yeah. should it bloom every year? I think so. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I've it hasn't bloomed yet. I've never had a big one. Yeah. <laughs> I had well, mine was in a five gallon can before it died, and I don't know what I did to it. Okay. I'll take a picture Sometime of it. And send I should, it to you. We should write articles on plants we've killed. <laughs> I was thinking of writing. An article called "I Killed Helen Keller," <laughs> yeah, and then in parentheses four times, yeah. Because yeah, I've had a Helen Keller rose right. four that I've killed. I like that. That's good. You know, you've been brilliant today without meaning to. <laughs> you said a couple of things that really. That's a great idea. I've killed Helen Keller. Yeah. Four so what times. is uh, what is that spear lily called? Uh, Dorianthus palmeri. Is that what it is? I'm not sure. I, yeah. There's a oh, tag there's a tag the, on it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Hey, we're going to go to a break here. Good thing I'm keeping track of the clock. Yeah. We're going to take a break uh, for our friends on BizTalk Radio. Do stay with us as we continue to show you more plants, unusual plants, plants we like, plants we love. They're our favorites. Back here, of course, those on BizTalk Radio, you can't see those plants. But maybe next time you tune into Facebook Live, you'll be able to see all the great visuals. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio. Stay with us. Okay, we are back. Uh, before the break, I mentioned uh, you can go to Facebook Live and watch our show, but John reminded me you can go to our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. All these shows are archived there. Go to our website. Go to uh, Facebook uh, anytime, and you can scroll down and watch a lot of our shows. You can watch and listen, John. 
Yeah, if you have trouble sleeping at night. There you go. <laughs> just turn on the show. Yep. Next thing you know, you'll be asleep. You know, one time on the way into the show, I actually caught one of our shows uh, via Alexa. Oh, yeah? I can't find it. Ever, ever since then, though, she won't find it. She found it once, the show. Really? And then, Have you said, Alexa, play Garden America? Yeah. I take me to Biz Talk Radio. I wonder what's happening everywhere now. <laughs> right now, everybody's little Alexa light just so she goes, I'm sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> Which I said, well, last week you knew it. What happened? She's busy. All the music she has to play for people sitting in that room, grabbing records, grabbing <laughs> CDs, <laughs> keeping up with everybody. Oh, you know, we, we uh, mentioned writing an article on plants we've killed, in, mm -hmm. and we've inspired Carla because she's thinking of writing a set of books. <laughs> so, plants I've Killed, Volume 1. Volume, volume, <laughs> volume one, 2. two. <laughs> it's like yeah. a little encyclopedia. <laughs> Yeah, so there's um, a link on, on Facebook, uh, GardenAmerica.com. Thank you, Daniel, for posting that. So go to our website. Click around. It's always different. It's not the same website every time. So you mentioned the Dorianthus palmeri. That is the right. correct name on it. Okay. Um, and then next to it, you have another plant. The it started with a B and a yucca. Do you remember it? Oh, the Beshnoria? Yeah. Uh, and this one is... To me, it reminds me a little bit of the Dorianthus and the way that it grows, but this one I think is called Flamingo. Oh, I and uh, it also it's got variegated foliage. Yeah, and that's that's why I brought it in because it's a similar type plant. And when this one blooms, it has fluorescent hot pink flowers. Ooh, Flamingo Glow. Flamingo Glow. Yeah, that's that's a good description. The it's I guess the bracts that are mostly that color though. Yeah. But so so to, it grows similar shape. I think as so. The yeah, yeah. The the full full ones I've seen are are very similar. Or full grown ones I've seen are very similar, but it's not quite as big as the Dorianthus, the plant itself. Now my Dorianthus that I have is part sun, very well draining soil, doesn't get a lot of water that I give it, it there's an irrigation system nearby. Uh -huh. um, would the other plant be similar to that? I think so. Yeah. I don't, you know, until I've killed a plant three times, right. I never, <laughs> never say I can't grow it. <laughs> uh, Gina came up with a good title for um, Carla's book, All Plants Go to Heaven. <laughs> there you go, Carla. Um. I want to show the ox tongue tiger if we're done, but John's okay. going to have to describe it. Why do I have to describe it? Because you know the background. You know a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> and it's actually your plant. I'm returning. I gave it to you to uh, babysit. Yeah, and I'm returning it now, and you'll see it's still in good health. Yeah. It, it blooms. What, is it once a year we get that bloom or twice? I, I think whenever it feels like Be it. Because you can still see the uh, where it bloomed right there exactly. So it's done blooming, and you said, told Dana, I need room. I'm giving this back to John. I, I saw the bloom. Actually, it doesn't take up much room at all, but, yeah, yeah that's it, like right here. This is it, ox tongue. Yeah, ox tongue is a succulent. Uh, the genus is Gasteria, G-A-S-T-E-R-I-A. And the nice thing about those is that if you want to grow a succulent indoors, mm -hmm. they, they'll grow without almost, I mean, virtually no light. That could be indoors then. It could be indoors, yeah. Wow. So uh, that in uh, Hayworthias Hayworthia. and uh, Sansevierias are all good low-light succulents for indoors, but also really good outdoors. Yeah. And it's called the ox tongue because, I guess, in someone's imagination, the leaf's the shape of a tongue. Right. And kind of And they're rough. Rough. They're very rough. Right. And you know when an ox licks you, Brian? Oh, it, gosh. Yeah. Last yeah. week. <laughs> Now it scrapes your skin. You used to have that plant outside, right, John? The ox tongue. The ox tongue. Yes, and it's been in my it, patio underneath it, the uh, the balcony. And it's been in your patio. It seems like it's got darker foliage. This variety is darker. Oh, is the, that a variety? Yeah, thing? there's yeah, there's several varieties yeah. of ox tongues. Okay. Uh, some are wider. Some are wartier. Uh huh. Um. There's but this one has a dark foliage tinge to it because, yeah, I feel like it, it looks darker than before. Yeah. But that's a cool plant. And, yeah. And, and virtually 
no mate. Just let, let it yeah, go. Yeah, you forgot it was there, and yeah. look at it now. Our uh, our friend Jan uh, in Brentwood, up in the Bay Area, says that uh, "Help Me Find Roses" says that Cliff Orant grows alfalfa. Oh, um, well, that's not surprising. Isn't Cliff your friend that had all the the roses in the desert? Right. I mean, thousands, yeah. and you had to move and them all. You can't go by his "Help Me Find" uh, yes. listing anymore because. He switched from from roses to plumeria. Oh, really? <laughs> he found out they he's do a down. lot better in the desert and don't need as much water. Well, he's a smarter man. And he used to have a – my idea for Polyantha Hill came from Cliff because uh, when my friend Joel and I visited his home, along the whole front of the street was a row of Polyantha roses, mm-hmm. uh, probably I would say 70 to 80 of them. And they were so spectacular in the spring that people driving down would stop their cars wow. and look at them, or people going on the street would ask him questions about them. And he did have alfalfa there, but I think that virtually all of Cliff's polyanthus are now dead. <laughs> Only the so, strongest survived. You yeah. had to move a whole bunch of them a few years ago, right? You went out there? Well, he, oh. he, we did. We went out there and we dug up probably... A hundred plants. What time of the year was that? Tell me it was. It was this. late spring, okay. so just before oh, the right. heat started. Right, right. And then Cliff hired, uh, the the following year, hired uh, a worker to dig up a bunch of plants, put them in five gallons, and actually drove them over to my house, which was was something. <laughs> but now some of those roses have gone into my polyantha hill, so, so they still survive anyway. But anyway, I do know that I have an alfalfa somewhere. I just have to find it. Uh, Lila says that she wanted to order those same plants from Annie's, but she's cutting back on her plant buys because her oldest daughter's getting married next year. Oh, goodness. Marriage is getting in the way of your plant collecting. It's all about the money, the finances. Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> it's because she wants to spend all the money on plants to give to her daughter yeah, as a right? wedding gift. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> No, daughters, do they still have that? Dowry? Some traditions. No, not a dowry. <laughs> not a dowry, but where the bride's parents have to pay for the wedding. Oh, I think uh, so. I Yeah. Do they? But, you know, that you can always deviate from that. Kind of to. sexist to me. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely not woke. Yeah. We did pay for my daughter's wedding. You'll probably pay for Tasia's wedding, right? We'll see. I don't know. It depends wow. on the wedding that she wants. <laughs> You can always encourage her to a low. Yeah, right. To say here, you, you know, want, here's the choice: want twenty thousand dollars. I'm just gonna have a stack of money and right. be like, "This could all be yours, or, or, or the wedding." Yeah, that's exactly right. Twenty, thirty grand toward the wedding or cash. Yeah, take the cash, go on a honeymoon, then invest <laughs> the cash. Yeah, exactly. I remember my wife's wedding dress. I still remember what we paid for it. Oh yeah, ninety dollars. Wow. <laughs> okay. And was that expensive do- at the time? Dollars that would be over a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that expensive at the time? No. 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 It was, it was a bargain at the time, yeah. but still ninety dollars. Yeah. yeah, that's cheap. Ninety won't even buy you. That's not even a trip to the grocery store. I, that's not, that's cost, not even the garter belt. It costs a hundred bucks just to get out of bed in the morning these days. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. true. Did we do all the plans? You were going to talk um, about that one. We got about a minute yeah. and a half until the next oh. break, Tiger. That's okay. A, we got well, I've got a couple things then. Okay. Um, well, leading into the ba- break, I will just mention that I really like this plant here, and I'll move some stuff around after the break to show it more. But it's a pepino melon. And who's pepino? Pepino, uh, the farmhand on the real McCoy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not 1957 named after to 63. Him, no, not named after him. But it, it's it's becoming kind of a popular plant at our nursery because it produces a fruit, kind of a cross between a melon and a cucumber, um, but kind of unique looking. It's got this kind of striped fruit on it. So when we get back from the break, I'll continue chatting about the pepino melon, how to grow it, where to grow it, and um, you know what else we need to know about it. And then we have um, a compost tea product that I've kind of gotten behind as well. I think it'll be fun to share with people. So we'll talk about that. So do stay with us. We have one more segment coming up before we say goodbye for this week. And again, as Tiger mentioned, coming back with uh, more discussions on those plants and that uh, you call that an an herbal tea, tea compost, (laughs) a tea compost, compost tea. Uh, Stay with us. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox, taking a break for our good friends on BizTalk Radio. And of course, back with Facebook Live 
after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. Stay with us. We can officially say the mics are hot. We are back. This is our last segment, final segment, for this edition of Garden America with uh, yours truly, Brian Main, John Bagnasker, Tiger Pelafox. Been a fun day. No guests today, but a lot of show and tell. And great questions and comments on Facebook Live. If you are tuned in on BizTalk Radio, you can watch us live uh, every Saturday morning, 8 o'clock in the West Coast, 11 o'clock Eastern Time Zone. Go to our Facebook page, Garden America Radio Show. And, of course, as we mentioned, you can watch previous shows on our YouTube channel, Garden America Radio Show. So many ways to watch and listen to Garden America. Now, Tiger, back to you. More plant discussions, more uh, more things to show people on Facebook Live. Yeah, so one of the plants I brought in, I'll take a, put the camera on it now, is the Pepino Melon. Um, it's, it's a Solanum. So Solanum's in the same family as uh, tomato, um, nightshade, you know, a bunch of other plants. And if you look at the flower, it there's a Solanum bush called a potato bush. Potato bush? Right. right. Potato right. bush or yeah. potato vine. Yeah. Are yeah. yeah. potatoes in the Solanaceae family like tomatoes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so there's a look bush called the potato <laughs> bush. And this has a little flower that is very similar to those. And it's very slim, similar to the other Solanum flowers as well. But um, it's called Pepino Melon because it produces a fruit that – Tastes like a cross between a like a honeydew melon and a cucumber, and in Spanish, pepino means cucumber. So there's a lot going on pepino in this means bush. Cucumber. Yeah, it's. I kind of feel. Yeah, I kind of feel yeah, like it's the. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you're just connecting it right now. Yeah, Walter Brennan, pepino. Yeah, yeah. yeah pepino and cucumber. <laughs> uh, but um, but this is like the um. Duckbill platypus, I feel, of plants, right? Why? Because the, the nothing well, belongs together. Well, it's all like a this. mishmash. It's called pepino, and it tastes like cucumber, but then it has melon, and then it looks like a potato bush, but at the same time, it's in the tomato family, and there's just a lot happening. But it is a pretty cool plant, and for us, it's um, a perennial. So meaning it's one of the, it's not like a tomato or a potato or something that's like an annual. So this is going to be a bush and in the wintertime, it doesn't look great. It's from South America, um, but it will come back every Peru, spring. They're native to Peru and, and it wasn't that many years ago that, that that's the only place you could find them. Oh, really? But now they're grown, uh, I think, uh, Australia, New Zealand, California a yeah. lot. Yeah. And yeah, the, you can find them at the supermarket now, right? Yeah, I was going to say, it's one of those fruits uh, or vegetables that became real popular with the introduction of a lot of this cooking um, because the fruit is really neat looking. It's striped. It's it's elongated. Um, it's one that you can just take a bite out of. You know, there's no peeling. There's no seeds. It's, it's, it's so, you know, in culinary form, when you can add it to a dish, it just adds that element of, interest intrigue to it um so i don't know i thought that was kind of a fun one to share yeah. as well so if you're interested in a edible plant that looks cool and also has a cool looking fruit which is easy to eat definitely look into the pepino melon six dollars a pound on melissa's produce if you want to mail wow. it. wow that's heavy all right your compost tea yeah um so compost tea one of those things that's been around for a long time um there's a company out there called Windbrand Farms that produced a very easy to brew compost tea. It's basically a, a mix that you can add water to. Um, it'll activate it, and then you can bring it in to water your plants and get that wonderful activation of of organic life into the soil. Um, I find compost teas work really well whenever you're trying to amend your soil without all of the work. So, you know, putting down the compost, tilling the soil, working it, all of that. Compost tea just kind of activates all that stuff in the soils that you have. If you can add a bark or a little bit of compost on top as just something to add some organic material. But um, I used, used to be soil soup. Yeah, was, we used uh, to be all about soil that. Soil soup, we talked a lot about that. Yeah, soil yeah. soup was um, 
uh, oxygen activated mm-hmm. aerobic compost. It gets all the bacteria f- going. Yeah, right? it was probably the one of the best things you could use. But oh, it was messy, messy and yeah. it's hard just, to. You you had to have it activated right. oxygen. You had to add molasses yeah. to keep it fed. Right. But yeah. so this one here is is not aerobic. Right. It, you just mix it with water. Yeah, you just mix it with water. Um, you can use it. You remember you could use soil soup also as a foliar spray. Yeah. And, and the reason was yep, that's right. it, is you had aerobic bacteria, which are healthy bacteria, that would compete with disease-causing organisms. So you could use it as a fungicide and actually you know, wipe out mildew and, and other diseases from plants besides uh, fertilizing. Fertilizing as well. And they say that you can use this one as a, uh, a foliar spray as well, probably not the, the mildew aspects of it, like you're saying with the soil soup. But um, easy to use, good product, and back to kind of like, you know, we, we, we love Milorganite, we love organic fertilizers, John loves Osmocote, um, but whenever you're using a product like a compost tea, you're, you're just enhancing the soil that much more that down the road your plants are going to benefit from it. And for me, who live in an area where I have a lot of heavy clay soil, I'm always working on adding things that help break up that clay and turn it into something a little bit easier to dig in. My ground is still so hard to dig in that I can't wait 10 years from now. Constant battle, huh? No, 10 years from now I have a goal, and I will be able to use a shovel in all the parts of my yard. See, I can't wait for 10 years, but for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got, I guess, about a minute to go, guys. Is that you know, it? Mike yeah, yeah. online wanted show. to, I think, was trying to be funny and wanted to know about the hop sing plant. Yeah, Mike plant. cites the hop sing plant from Bonanza. Right, but I bet Mike didn't realize there's a daylily called hop sing. There you go, Mike. See? Yeah. Always something. we got Pepino going to town this morning. Got hop Linda sing. wants to, in Reading wants to know where to get the compost tea tiger. Yep, and quickly. Oh. We sell that at Mission Hills Nursery, um, but ship? but um, Wind Brant Farms is the brand. If um, okay. you you are somewhere where maybe you're not close to the nursery, all right. Okay, thank you, guys, gentlemen. Thank you, uh, those on Facebook Live. We really appreciate your interaction this morning, your questions, your comments, and those that are of course tuned in on Biz Talk Radio, listening to last week's program. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll be back again next weekend, same time. Kick things off 8 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. Tiger Eastern time zone right there, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and happy birthday to my wife, Janine. Happy birthday, Janine. Thank you. Until next week, I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasker, Tiger Palafox. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Have a great week. And we'll see you again next week right here on the Garden America Radio and Entertainment Network. Take care. Be safe.